Hello, beautiful souls. Welcome to another beautiful episode of Happiness from Within, where our aim is to touch people's hearts and souls at a very deep level through interviews to help you come out of the darkness and into the light. I am beyond ecstatic for today's beautiful guest. Her name is Amber Valdez. Amber is a former NFL cheerleader. She is a powerful example of a woman living her purpose. She transformed her pain into purpose and now is helping hundreds of women all over the world through her incredible program. And also she is such a beautiful example of coming out of the darkness and into the light. So I'm really excited for her to share her story with you today and actually have her here on the line. Hi, Amber. How are you? Hi, I'm amazing. I'm staring outside as the snow is falling down about an hour and a half east of Los Angeles in April. And it is just wild. We were probably going to have a foot of snow when it's all said and done. So I'm just wrapping up a full day of client coaching calls and and just so honored and blessed to be receiving this gift of snow and uh, being on the call uh, on the on this podcast with all of you. So thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to drop in and share space with us. And I promise you it will be worth it. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so just really want to thank you again for being here. So take us back, Amber. Um, where are you from? I grew up in Northern California um, with a mom who, you know, experiences, you know, mental disorder this lifetime. So I grew up in a very mentally, emotionally, and physically abusive home. Um, my dad was an addict. Um, we were on and off welfare and, and food stamps. And my dad was, you know, an addict until the last 13 years of his life. So that, you know, created its own set of set of journey experiences and initiations. And my mom ended up moving us up to um, Oregon and then essentially Seattle um, as I moved into, you know, junior high and high school. And from that space, you know, I really realized that I needed to become the cheerleader uh, of my own life. And I ended up becoming a cheerleader in high school, which I often joke about, you know, cheerleading saved my life. And I didn't really realize that until a podcast interview about a year ago. But cheerleading gave me an opportunity to literally put on a mask and pretend everything was okay at home. Uh, child protective services were in and out of my house growing up. And I got to just, you know, put on my skirt and put on a smile and basically focus out on others and, and get excited and celebrate and be a stand to cheer other people on. And it wasn't until I graduated high school and ended up cheering in the NFL, really recognizing I was like chasing this, this, this lack of self-worth and no matter what job I had, whether it was three or four jobs at a time to make sure I had abundance because I never wanted to be broke and I never wanted to, you know, experience what I had to experience growing up. And it wasn't really until I made my way down to Los Angeles chasing my TV hosting dream that I ended up with, you know, a severe eating disorder an exercise addiction, you know, spending time running with, you know, socialites and no matter what celebrity I interviewed on and off red the carp off the red carpet, it was never enough. And it wasn't until I went through a really dark night of the soul journey. Um, I'd always been spiritual and I had like my first round of spiritual awakening at 19 when the book, you can heal your life fell off the shelf. Um, but around the time when I was having my dark night of the soul journey, I was also manifesting like crazy. You know, I had been making more money than I never made as a nanny high profile families and but I still wanted like like-minded tribe and like-minded sisterhood and so I was really studying the teachings of Abraham Hicks and this had to be about eight years ago and was manifesting like like-minded women and I wanted to create more abundance and so I was playing with this law of attraction but still there was something missing and around that time I had been bullied on a reality show um, realized that I didn't want to be on TV anymore talking smack about my peers celebrities um, the same year I really realized I hadn't ever faced off with mourning the death of my dad, who was my hero and became my best friend and my lifeline, really. And at the same token, I found out my boyfriend, um, who had moved across the country from Miami with, for, for me, I thought, um, was having sex with strangers who worked in the in and out drive through and anywhere he could pick them up. So essentially, my house of home was dead. My dad was dead. My love life was dead. And my dream was dead. And I had an out of body experience on the set of E! News and really just found myself suicidal. And that night I was going to go home and drink an entire, eat an entire bottle of NyQuil PM, Costco size. And I ended up going on a hike with a, with a friend through the grace of God who had written my name in the sand on the beach, uh, uh, taking this program and during a meditation of who needed this program. And my name came up 
And she had no intention of calling me because I had already told her I'm good. I'm spiritual. I listened to Louise Hay and Abraham Hicks. Like I possibly don't need, I don't need any support. So I'm letting my doggy out. No problem. And it was through that program that I really recognized my soul assignment and my life purpose. And it wasn't to be on TV. It wasn't to interview celebrities for a living. It was to literally um, raise the conscious of the planet and support people in loving themselves and owning their worth and getting paid for their gifts. And so from that space, I became, became the life purpose cheerleader. And for many years, I was guiding um, women to love themselves, own their worth, men too, but mostly women to get paid for their gifts. And I did that through my online programs and my worldwide retreats. And I did that under the umbrella of the life purpose cheerleader. And it really wasn't until last year that I really realized this archetype of a cheerleader just didn't serve me anymore. I didn't want to put on a show. I didn't always have to be smiling. I didn't want to have to drag people into their purpose and keep reminding people that they matter and pulling them to the front lines to serve the planet. It's like, I just want to show up and be, and I just want to, you know, walk into a room and let my presence be enough and not feeling like I had to perform or still even just with the archetype of cheerleader is still this, this performing archetype, you know, of pretending everything's great. And so I really decided to retire it. And as of January 1st, I retired the name as life purpose cheerleader and just went on as Amber Valdez and no longer set my pom poms down, you know, picked up my sword as the Joan of Arc of light workers and got really clear that my purpose on this planet is to activate the soul assignment um, of 1 million people and to, you know, join arms and hearts with the 144,000 light workers that are here to raise the consciousness of the planet that are here to create a new earth, create heaven on earth. And so since then I've been really clear to only work with mystics, healers, medicine, women, men, shamans, um, and support them in getting their message out and their medicine out um, and really like crush this scarcity slavery vibration and savior complex that so many of us um, healers have and to really teach healers to step to the front lines and own their worth and own their power and charge accordingly for their gifts because I truly believe um, healers hold and light workers hold the, the, the most magical potent medicine so now I've listened to the call of spirit and I'm in the mountains and and here we are <laughs> Wow Wow, that's wow, that's really amazing. Thank you so much from my heart to yours for sharing that. That's that's really really deep. I'd love for you to share um, that moment that you had when you had your pivotal pivotal moment of when you were like, "I'm not going to put on the mask anymore, and I'm I'm gonna, you know, take the step to go towards my purpose." Can you talk about that? Maybe somebody listening right now is going through ju exactly just that they're just really like struggling and they're just like do i take the step do i not but if you could talk about just anything from your heart in that that moment that you had what was going on through your mind physically mentally spiritually yeah so i think thank you for asking that like i think even more so than that moment where i decided to take the life purpose cheerleader mask off because it was like I honored her, right? Like she got me where I am and the pom poms and the jumping, you know, and all these sites all around the world and, you know, being the cheerleader for others that I never had, you know, like that was incredible. Like I don't take any of that in vain and I'm grateful for that part of my journey, but really recognize as I stepping into like the mother and the maiden and the crone archetype, right? Like these and, and learning to work with the seasons and learning to be in the divine feminine because even the cheerleader is in the constant doing right? She's doing something. And I think that that addiction to cortisol and the stress hormone and growing up in a very stressful environment played into me, into my purpose. It played into me building my business. And although I'm grateful for that cheerleader archetype, she can only take me so far, right? And we hear often a lot of like leaders and emotional intelligence trainers talk about what got you here won't get you there. And I think that like I grew out of her, you know, like a beautiful pair of shoes that's still awesome. We're just kind of over it, right? Or so some people cut their hair or like, okay, I've had long hair my whole life. I want short hair now. Not that there's anything wrong with it. It's just that we're ready to like birth into this new, you know, wise woman, if you will. And so as I've been owning my sh shamanistic practices and medicine woman, as I've been diving into the drum and, and channeling and doing sound and really just activating my inner light being, um, things have kind of just like pivoted, right? And it's no longer this, you know, even the cheerleader the archetype was very masculine. It was nonstop. It was go, 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 do, 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 create, create, create. I mean, if you think about cheerleaders, let's go, L-E-T-S-G-O, like it's just constant 
nonstop. And that archetype just wasn't serving me anymore. It was actually making me exhausted and question that I wanted to keep doing this. Right. And so I think what could even be more supportive for the audience is that if you're in a space right now where I, where I was, where I was like, I don't know what I want to do, but this isn't it. Right. I've had a million jobs. I've done what people think I should do. I followed the crumbs of what I was good at and I'm still not feeling fulfilled inside. Like there has to be more, but what? Like I've only done this. What could I do? Right. How could I possibly get paid for that? And for me, it was like no one in my family was an entrepreneur. So I didn't really know that that was even possible for me. Like I didn't even know that was a thing. Right. And living paycheck to paycheck was definitely what my mom taught me. Right. And like that was like, even though I was making $2,700 a week as a nanny, for some reason, I still didn't have money. So like, I don't know what that's about. Right. Cause it's not about how much money you make. Like you can still be making a ton of money and still have a scarcity mindset, which I know sounds obnoxious, but it's like why all the people win the lottery and 90% of them go broke. Right. Because they don't feel worthy of the abundance that they acquired. Right. So if you're in a space right now where you're like, I don't know what I want to do, but this isn't it. Or I think I know what I want to do and I'm confused and I'm questioning myself. What you get to truly ask yourself is if I died tomorrow, would I be like, oh my God, I shoulda, coulda, woulda, or would I be like, fuck yeah, that was an awesome ride. Right. And for me, if I died tomorrow, it would be fuck yeah, it was an awesome ride. Right. I'm 41. There's obviously a lot more I could create, but I'm content right now. I've traveled the world. I've lit souls on fire. I've made, made more money than anyone in my family. Like I feel doing what I love and giving my gifts. Right. So for me, it's not even about the money. Right. Like I finally got myself the BMW. That was my dream car. Like, yeah. And so what? Right. Like now I'm living in the mountains. I'm like, yeah. And so what? Right. I've been to Africa. I've been to Bali. I've been to Paris a bunch of times and all the things like I've been to these places that I would never in a million years think I would go. Neither did any of my family ever went. And they still think I'm crazy. They still don't get me. They still don't support what I'm up to. They still don't listen to my, my videos. They still have never even read my ebook. They've never donated to my like going to Africa and building water wells. Like they have absolutely no clue what I do, no clue what I'm up to. And that's okay. I love them anyway. And so I don't need their acknowledgement. So if you're in a space where you've been being slave to your job, to your career, to your friendships, you just start to really ask yourself, about your what self-worth conversation. And if you don't feel worthy, it will show up everywhere. It will show up in your bank account. It will show up in your friendships. It will show up with the fact that you're still working at that shitty job that barely gets you by and pays your bills, right? It will show up everywhere. And when we start to love ourselves in a deeper capacity, we start to vibrate at a frequency that demands worthiness, that demands friendships that respect us, that demands partners that honor us and, and cherish us, demands companies to pay us our worth, right? So when we raise our frequency of self-worth, everything in our life starts to change. So when people ask me like, well, yeah, I want to start my business and this and that, if they haven't done their self-worth practices and if they're not in the process of that as they're building that thing, it won't ever happen. Because they'll go to go live on their Facebook and they'll be worried about what Sally from high school will think, or they're worried about what their cheeks look like. I'm saying that because I'm working with one of my clients. She has, has a cheek story and her cheeks are amazing. And she's adorable, and beautiful, but it's interesting the things we have. And I used to have a nose story. I used to get made fun of for my nose my whole childhood and having small breasts. And the nose thing was like huge when I was on TV and I had an agent tell me I need to get a boob job and another one tell me I need to get a nose job. And I was like, F this. Like if I become famous, it's going to be for who I am and my small boobs and my big nose. And that's what's up. And like, now I love my nose. I remember years of my life. I would look in the camera on TV and be like, Oh my God, I would see my face is talks a little crooked, my mouth a little off to the right or left or whatever. And my nose is big. And I would just like beat myself up, you know? And it's like, now I look at myself in the mirror and I don't even look at that. I don't even see that stuff. And it goes to show of how much I love myself now. And so if you are in a space where you're really ready to make the jump, you get to double down on your self-worth practices, your self-love practices, so you can actually be in the space to be able to hold the business, the joy, the relationship, the friendships, the big life. Because a lot of people want to have a big life. Oh, you're so lucky you travel the world and oh, you must be hard. And like, you know, will mock me or something like people from high school. And I'm like, you can have it too. Oh, I could never. Yes, you could. 
there's no difference between you and I, except that I've just been in committed action and done the work to feel confident. And, and even when I'm not confident, do it anyway. Right. And so like, I still feel nervous every time I get an interview or every time I speak or every time I launch a program or put myself out there. It's not that the fear goes away. It's not that the, the doubt goes away. It's just that I've practiced being in action while experiencing that frequency long enough that it no longer paralyzes me anymore. And so for those of you that are like, wow, man, like I really, really, you know, I know I'm here for more. I just don't know what it is. Get curious about yourself and do the work to double down on loving yourself, respecting yourself and making sure that everything in your life is a direct reflection of the, the, of the worth that you desire. Because for so long I think about my past and almost being killed by ex-boyfriends and dating drug dealers and drug addicts. And I'm like, wow, like who is that girl? You know, that girl was just trying to be loved. That girl didn't love herself. She didn't have an example of self-worth. And so she made choices and put herself in positions that someone who really loved themselves would never. Right? So I can go on a tangent. You better interrupt me here soon, sister, because I'll just keep going, Janet. <laughs> No, that's beautiful. I, I had a few questions from actually a few young women. So the question is this, is that they've seen this pattern in their life. But, so they're light workers. And the question mm -hmm. that they have is, so they, they have a full-time job, right? And then they've lost their job and they see that they have these gifts. They see the light and it's kind of like this up and down, you know, basically like a yo-yo, right? I'm like, well, how am I supposed to know when to go to full time? And like, I think I'm ready. Like, can you talk about the importance of taking small steps towards uh, mm. living, living your purpose? Yeah. So I might be the wrong person to recommend that because I don't believe in small steps. I, I, I'm a, I'm a all the way fucking in kind of girl. I'm all in or I'm all out. Love it. So, and so that's challenging for some people who are very much not like that. Right. So I thank my Leo Sagittarius self um, for that. And the Capricorn in me that sees the goal on the top of the mountain and literally will do whatever it takes to get there. So I have never been the queen of excuses. And maybe it's because of my childhood. I'll work five jobs. You know, I'll work 31 days in a row to pay my rent. Like I'll literally do whatever it takes. I'm a whatever it takes girl. I'm a survivor deep within my core. I don't do well with mediocrity. But if I think about a time, when I was like, if I serve one more drink and if one more guy smacks my ass, cause I used to work at nightclubs in Los Angeles when I was gigging in on my hosting dream, I was like, if I have to serve one more, if one more person spills a shot on me or like smacks my ass, I'm going to lose it. I remember getting to that point in the restaurant business and in the, in the bar industry. Like I was like, I can't, I don't care how much money I'm taking home at night. Like I cannot do it. I cannot smile anymore. Right. And I know a lot of people feel like that in their day to day jobs because I coach a ton of them. <laughs> right. And they're like, I'm, I'm losing it. Like, I'm actually feeling like having dreams of going in and lighting the whole place on fire. Like, I understand. So, but in a different context. So, the thing is, you don't have time. And for those of you, you have to ask yourself how much longer you want to sell your soul. And you got to ask yourself, how much longer do you want to be worthy of just that? Because essentially you're a slave. And I know that sounds really, really harsh, but you're, you are a slave. If you're selling your time for money, you're a slave. If you're selling your time for someone else's dream that you hate and you can't stand and you're just staying there because you got to pay your rules and pay your rent because you got kids to feed, you're a slave. The slave, a sl and I'm not blaming you because I was under it for 35 years. Okay. I didn't really dive into my purpose till I was 35 years young and I'm 41 now. So, the thing you really get to ask yourself is, have I done the good work on myself to make sure that I matter? Have I faced off with my childhood traumas and belief systems from my parents, parents that didn't only did the best they could and you know didn't know any better? Am I facing off with, am I surrounded by a, a community of people that sees possibility, that are doing podcasts, right? That are writing books, that are working from home. Like who is your tribe? You know, like my tribe that I roll with, like I'm like the last one on the fucking podcast train, you know, and I'm just like, I've been supposed to start a podcast for years now, but I'm doing all the other things. It's coming. Um, you know, same with like YouTube channel. Like I started a YouTube channel like 12 years ago. You know what I mean? And, but when you're surrounded by people who this is their new normal, yeah, I'm going to Bali for a month. Yeah, I'm going here. It just becomes like, duh, of course. Right. So when the girls are like, yeah, let's go to Bali for, you know, 
three weeks and rent a 12 bedroom villa. I'm like, sure, of course. You know, oh, I got a $150,000 book deal. Sure, of course, right? Like my tribe just continues to level me up as I level them up. And then she sees I did something. And then, oh, I'll do that. You saw Lori Harder. She did the text thing and I did the text thing. And then Nick Pigeon called me today and was like, where'd you get your text line from? And I, everybody, oh, I should do that, right? So everyone's just like helping each other raise. Like, oh, it's all possible. So when you roll with people that it's all possible, you can't settle for mediocrity. And so like, you want a new life, you got to get a new tribe. And I'm not saying turn your back on your friends or your family, always love them. But I'm saying if you're, you're either going to choose to roll with them or you're going to choose to roll with the people in the space that, of where you want to go. And so you can't be the biggest fish in the small pond, right? You got to be in a big pond with a bunch of fish. So you're always expanding and ascending. And so I hope that was supportive in the space of like, I say, for those of you that have been released from your job and stop saying you lost your job or you got fired or you got let go, why not say, sometimes when I don't make a decision, spirit makes it for me. Thank you, spirit, for finally making the dang choice that I was too much of a coward to make. And I'm trusting that this is happening for me and that you're finally pushing me out of the nest before I'm ready. Right. And the getting ready to get ready and the commitment to our comfort zone is what's kept 90% of our population um, in robbing the planet of their gifts. And what's, what's kept 90% of the population running from their purpose and what's kept 90% of the population in mediocrity, which has kept them at the lowest vibration that they've been walking and going to work every day, sometimes with panic attacks and, and holding their babies and not wanting to go to work on Monday morning. That frequency has been keeping this entire planet down, and that's why the planet isn't ascending, because there's not enough people with their freaking souls on fire. There's not enough people waking up every day lit and doing the thing they came here to do, because they're believing the stories of their parents, parents of the Great Depression of, got to get a good job and get benefits and walk pick a fence and save for your 401k, and then all of a sudden you're 65 and you've never even gotten a passport, you've never even traveled the world, but damn, Netflix is good. And then they wonder why they are taking all these painkillers and all these bottles of medicine because they are dying inside because their fire has not been lit. And so we get to look at our parents and say, do I want their life? And I guarantee you 90% of you are like, hells to the no. Well, guess what? You are going to have their life unless you make a different choice, unless you invest in coaches in programs that can get you from where you are to where do you want to be. You can't just wish yourself into being a doctor you got to go get a loan. Most people wouldn't go to college if they didn't get a freaking loan, didn't open a credit card, didn't get a grant, right? Didn't get money to educate them to get the tools they needed to make the money. But so many people have issues about investing in coaches. Oh, I don't want to go into debt. Oh, but you want to live your life like that? You're in debt because of the choices you're making now. You're living paycheck to paycheck because you don't feel worthy of more. Hear that. And I know that's painful. Because you don't love yourself. And I know it because I was there. So that's the first step going, okay, I'm going to love myself enough to be honest with myself, to be like, I'm selling my soul right now. I need to go and follow the breadcrumbs of what lights me up. So for those of you that want to pussyfoot and tippy toe into your purpose, fine, honoring it. And I'm an all in kind of chick. I'm like, let's go all in. Let's open a small business loan and let's do the damn thing. Or open a credit card, hire a coach while you're working at that shitty job. Like when you come and work with me, we'll set like three months until you quit your job and you will. Three to six months. It's usually a hell of a lot sooner because they're like, I can't do this anymore. Right? And that's the point. Why does it have to get so painful until you leave? Why do you feel you're worthy of that pain? Why do you feel you're worthy of that stress? Why do you feel you're worthy of being a slave? You're choosing that. Get curious about why you're still there. And what stories you're making up that you don't deserve to be happy and lit and on fire. And if I can do it, you can do it. I'm no better than you. I didn't go to college. You probably went to college, right? But it's about unlearning these belief systems that we were taught that life has to be hard and has to be hard to make money and blah, 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 blah. Right? And that's all a bunch of bullshit, patriarchy, slavery, manipulation. Don't get me going on conspiracy theory tip. <laughs> Wow. 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 I love it. I love it. So in your amazing, uh, coaching platform, uh, turn your crazy into purpose. Would you mind sharing a little bit about, you know, somebody that's listening, maybe three steps 
that, I mean, that one could take to start maybe asking the right questions? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So really getting curious about what I want. Like, what do I want? And if you don't know what you want, you got work to do, right? Because that means you've been so used to giving up your needs and your desires for so long, honoring you. My heart hurts for you when I was there, right? Not understanding. I remember I used to like hit myself up against the wall. Like, why can't I find a good partner? Like, why are my friends only partying? Why can't I, why, why don't these jobs fulfill me? Like, uh, like, but I'd still keep going to them, right? Because I was just going through the motions. I had blinders on. I didn't know any different. And so like you have to educate yourself and get around people that you see online or that you listen on podcasts or you've read books. You need to get into the vortex of people that have you going, wow, I wish I could do that. That's like the first stop. That's like the first nudge wanting more because here's the deal. If you can see it in someone else, it's active. It's in your, D in your DNA. It just hasn't been activated yet. Right. And so if you're feeling jealous, oh, why do they have a podcast? And I don't, or, oh, you know, that's kind of the first step is the jealousy. I remember I used to be really jealous of Marie Forleo like 12 years ago, 10 or 12 years ago. And I'd be like, oh, you know, <laughs> I dance, I'm funny, I'm goofy. Why don't I have a show? You know, and I used to be judged Judy for her. When I meet her one day, she's friends with a bunch of my friends. When I meet her one day, I'm going to tell her this and be like, it's just so crazy that like, I was making up a story that because Marie had a show, I couldn't have one. And that's scarcity, right? Instead of using Marie as fuel and inspiration, I use it as like making myself, myself feel like a loser, right? And so getting curious about the jealousy, getting curious about the desires or the wishing or the hoping, right? And then from that space, again, get around people who have what you want or it looks like the lives that you want starting to think about what mindset they have, what work they've done on themselves, because you can't just become successful without doing any work on yourself. The same reason why you're not successful is the same reason why you got to get the tools to figure out why you're not like what stories you've been telling yourself, what belief systems you've had, what belief systems were put in your DNA by your parents, by your great grandparents, what ancestral um, lineage scarcity and repression and slavery belief systems have been programmed into your body that you're just becoming a little minion robot going through life. Do, do, do I hate my job, but it plays the bills and I have benefits and thinking that's okay. Well, if your mom thinks it's okay and your dad thinks it's okay and your sisters and your brothers think it's okay, then you almost feel like there's something wrong with you for wanting more than that. There's nothing wrong with you for more than that. You're probably the awake one in the family. The black sheep is often the awake one. I am the biggest black sheep out of my family and I am the most awake and I am the most conscious. I am no longer better than them. I'm just on a different path. And I've no longer looked for my family for approval. And I no longer look for my family to accept me or get it or praise me because it's not their job, right? I found my soul family, my blood family. They're my blood family, but I don't owe them anything and they don't owe me anything either. And I certainly am not going to let them rob me from fulfilling my one number one soul assignment and mission. And so for the Turn Your Crazy in Your Purpose boot camp, it was a, a course I ran for four years, five years, and I had over 350 students graduate. And last week, Spirit told me to open it back up again. Um, and I offered it for $3,000 off. It was $3,333 last round. And I ended up offering it for three grand off because I know that this work is imperative for people, especially for the people who are making up the stories and I'm not worthy to invest in myself. And I just got fired from my job and there's no way in hell I could actually invest three grand in myself. I'm like, all right, you know what? Let's just do it. We've got 28 students in there, probably people that would never be able to work with me or afford to work with me and or or believe they're afford let's just be honest let me reframe uh, believe that they can afford working with me because when i hired my first coach i was broke and i had to put five thousand dollars i chose i got to blessed to put five thousand dollars on my zero percent interest card american express and many people including my boyfriend at times like this is irresponsible you have no income why are you opening your credit card and i said because i'm sick of this i'm sick of looping i'm sick of having money and not money i'm sick of not knowing what i want i'm sick of feeling this way I don't know what I want, but this isn't it. And I need help. And I finally realized I was at the definition of insanity. I was doing the same fucking thing, expecting a different result and getting nowhere fast. And I was starting to lose it. And so if you're in that space, congratulations, your life's about to change if you choose. And so the Turn Your Crazy and the Purpose Bootcamp is a four to six week course where I support people with getting connected to spirit. So if you don't have a morning ritual practice, there's your problem. 
first. If you don't have a meditation practice, Dr. Wayne Dyer talks about if prayer is you talking to God, meditation is God talking to you. And so many people don't meditate, which means they're living their life from their ego and they're letting their darkness drown out the whispers of their soul. And so the fastest thing for you to do is to get a solid meditation practice. So you actually start listening to the divine, your guide's source, and stop listening to Sally from high school or your mom and your boys telling you, you can't do this and you can't do that and it's impossible and we can't afford it and blah, 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 and all the other things I heard as a kid. So I never wanted to slow down because it was too scary to actually have to feel. Feel abandoned, feel not worthy, feel not good enough, feel confused. So I just kept going, 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 going. And I know that's what a lot of people do to cope. And so slowing down to listen and receive. So I would say your top thing would be meditation, creating morning ritual practice, surrounding yourself by people that inspire you, that have what you want, because that gets to be your focus of like, if they can do it, I can do it. And realize that you're no different than them. They're just a couple steps ahead of you and one choice away from really living your best damn life. Wow. <laughs> wow. That's amazing. Thank you. Can you talk about um, when spirit is speaking to you, like when you know for sure with your life that like you're moving in the direction of your purpose? Yeah. Thank you. That's an incredible question. Um, so spirit comes to me almost like a voice. Like it's not like an audible voice that I hear, like I'm hearing you speak to me now, but it's a voice in my head and it's a subtle voice, but it's like a confident one. So like when I got the hit, I call it a hit. When I get the hit, I was in a Kundalini yoga class and I got the hit to go on this platform called Periscope and Periscope was a live video platform before Facebook and Instagram live was even a thing. And I'm like, Periscope, that's weird. I'm crazy. That's just odd. Right? And then I ran into my web designer that day, and she was like, you should, you should go on Periscope. I'm like, what? And then I had a video editor go, you know, you should go on Periscope. I was like, okay, this is weird. Like, what is Periscope? Went down the train, la, 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 la. Let's just say from that experience, I ended up going from 700 followers to 10,000 overnight. I started trending on Twitter. All of a sudden, I had an audience. I was like, whoa. Then I was just doing these live videos with my sticky notes. You know, it's like six years ago now talking about everything from abundance to meditation, to angels, to crying on there, yelling on there, be, just being full on video vlog style. Right. So that was the first time spirit gave me an intuitive hit. Second time. Uh, well, not second time. There's been so many times, but the, the other significant times would been when spirit told me to move to the mountains. All right. All right. And literally just, this happened a few months ago. And so when I get that voice, that's like, you need to get out of here. You need to get, you need to go to the mountains. And I was like, what is this mountains thing? Right. And I'm like, and you guys, I lived in LA for 18 years. Like I was a full on Hollywood socialite all up in the thing, all up in the Hills. I was on a show called Beverly Hills nannies. Like you're talking about someone who was like miss LA. Okay. And all my friends are there and all the influencers I roll with live there. Like we've got this big tribe, you know, and I'm like, never thought I would leave LA. Never, never in a million years. And the pull kept getting really intense. Right. And I'm like, what? I was like, I got to get out of here, but I don't know where I'm going to go. First, it was like, I know I need to move, but like where? I've lived in LA, I'm in, uh, all over LA, Hollywood, West Hollywood, Beverly Hills, Venice, blah, blah. nowhere else to go now. I don't have, I, I, there was no destination, but I just knew I needed to move. I felt I needed to move. And it was listening to the nudges. It's like listening to the little inner nudges of spirit that are like, ding, 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 and noticing how it would feel. And I went to a retreat in Shasta and I threw a retreat in Shasta and then I went to Australia and I threw another retreat in Australia in the rainforest. And I was like, always feeling like I don't want to go back to LA. And I was like, this is weird. I was like, I can't deal with the cars. I can't deal with the frequency. And I was kept saying to everyone, I got to get out of this 5G cock block. 
I, I kept saying this 5G cock bomb. People are like, what are you talking about? I'm like, the web. Like, I just started feeling a frequency and I couldn't sleep and I was having headaches and the cars were going and sirens are going and choppers are going over LA. And I lived in the valley and I was like, I cannot handle this noise. Like, I feel like I'm being cock blocked from spirit. Like, I felt like I couldn't, I couldn't connect. I was just like, I've created as much as I could create here. And it was like, why don't you just move now? And it wasn't until my dog passed away on December 4th, I think it was like December 7th, that I walked upstairs and where her dog bed was, and I heard, not audibly, but in my head, you're done here. And I was like, oh. And it was like, it's time to go. It's time to move. And I was like, and I had this whole wave come over my body of like, it's time. But where? Right? But where? And it wasn't until I went and did some deep, deep, deep shamanic work with one of my mentors and dear sisters. And I was like, sister, I need to move. And she lives in the mountains, not this mountain, another mountain down in San Diego. And I was like, oh, I think I want to move to the mountains. Wow. And literally I was like, okay, where? And the only places was Lake Arrowhead that I'd ever been. And I knew I had friends in Idlewild and literally Spirit was like, I got home later that night. And I was like, well, what am I waiting for? Like, why don't I just go on Zillow and just look? And at finding two places up here in Lake Arrowhead. And my friend, Nick Pigeon, she's a Hay House author. She was like, for my birthday, they were asking my intentions, which is December 28th. And I was like, you know, my mountain house, like a mountain house is my intention, right? I want a mountain house. I never lived in the mountains. And so she's like, why don't you just go live into your vision? I think that's beautiful. January 1st, go live into your vision and go book. And so I literally got, stayed home on New Year's Eve, wrote my book, got up in the morning, drove up to Lake Arrowhead, which is an hour and a half east of Los Angeles with my dog. I saw the house that I'm sitting in right now in one other house that I got stuck on the mountain, had to get dugged out by six dudes, like full on, obviously not the place. And I literally went home, applied, and like was in this house three weeks later. Wow. And so just now with all the shit going down, everybody's like, oh my God, you knew. Like your soul knew that you needed to get off grid. There's no 5G up here. Wow. Like wow. I knew I needed to get out. So there's been a lot of times like that where it's just been these little nudge from spirit. And now when spirit talks, I listen. Spirit told me to launch Lunch Your Light Shine Live. That program made me 150 grand, maybe 200 grand. Like spirit told me to launch Turn Your Crazy into Your Purpose. Like when spirit tells me to do things, like told me the other day, you need to do the boot camp. I just listen. I don't question it anymore. So I've just gotten really good at listening because I've been so committed to my spiritual practices and because I can hear the distinction for just act. So I just get ideas and I just get into action. You know, the other day I got the hit to do the text line and then I had like 200 people on my mailing list. Like, you know, I just, when I get these hits from spirit in meditation early in the morning, late at night, I just go into action now, but because meditation helps you learn to trust yourself. Right. And if you start to learn to trust yourself, you start to listen to that voice. It gets familiar and you're like, okay, it's the same one that goes, you should put that quarter in that meter or you should move your car. You're going to get towed. You guys know what I'm talking about. You get those little nudges that are like, Ooh, I should turn here. And then bam, there's a car accident right in front of you. Right? Like we all can tap into that voice. They're there. But so many of us are just too busy. Go, go, go do, do, doing that. We miss it. And so that's why, you know, this literally making your meditation practice, your top priority and your, in your, your sadhanas will give you an opportunity to truly fully um, become a perfectionist of a listener to the voice. So then you can start to trust yourself and trust the voice. And then you're just blissfully guided. Wow. 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 That's, that's so beautiful because it goes back to what you were saying that when you know that you're living your purpose, everything just flows. It does. And when you're connected to source, everything flows like literally. So the first house I looked at, it's $200 cheaper than the one I was paying for in Los Angeles. This is a four bedroom, two bath, two bedrooms on land, trees, porch, like laundry room, all the things like I'm living my best life for cheaper than I was living in LA. I still work from home. Like 
we're on quarantine and nothing's really changed for us too much here. <laughs> wow. Right. That's so beautiful. Um, I feel right now, um, Spirit wanted me to ask you this question. Uh, obviously, right now we're going through a global shift. Is there any message that you'd like to share with our audience? Anything regarding healing? Just anything from your heart? Thank you for asking that. Um, let's just check in real quick. Thank you. Spirit, speak through me, for me, for all those that are listening. Let me know. Whatever would be the highest and best for all those that are listening, what does their souls need to hear in this moment? I would say that trust what's unfolding, whether it's pivoting from friendships, parents, relationships, people dying and crossing over to the next unfolding because people don't die. You know, they, their physical form dies, but their spirit and their soul never dies. It just continues to evolve and shift. Um, and the soul is infinite. Trust in this death trust in this death of the way we used to live trust in the death of the way politics used to be ran trust in the death you know of whatever is shifting in your life there's nothing wrong and the guidance i keep getting from my guides i'm not watching the news i'm not watching tv i'm dropping into meditation i'm getting the truth and getting the downloads way in advance i knew this was going to happen i i i knew that the, the the things that are unfolding and the way they're unfolding spirit's been telling me and so it's because i've been quiet and now I'm up in the mountains, 5,777 feet, so I don't have any cock blocking going on. But trust that this is the best thing that could be happening to you. This is the time we came for. This is what we manifested. We were chosen by our lineage of light worker, uh, our lineage of ancestors to come and incarnate into the planet this time. You have an opportunity to heal seven generations behind you and seven generations ahead of you. You have an opportunity to be a part of this new earth, which is getting out of your head that kept you in the jaw, playing small and mediocrity and getting you into the fifth dimensional frequency, which is stop thinking and start feeling. Feel your way through life. Feel this feels good. This doesn't feel good. I'm going to work every day. My stomach hurts. I'm anxious. I'm tired. I'm frustrated. Listen to your body. Stop listening to you know society that's, trying to program you. So this is an opportunity for us to start to listen to our soul, listen to ourselves and to act and to stop questioning. You cannot get into the fifth dimension, the new earth by questioning and logic and reason. There's no logic and reason, which is why I called my program to turn your crazy into your purpose. Everyone thought I was crazy. The definition of crazy is doing the same thing, expecting different results. The people that changed the world were called crazy from Bill Gates. And I hate quoting him, but Steve Jobs, they were all called crazy people. Einstein, all crazy people. Anybody who thinks outside of the norm is deemed crazy. So get on that crazy train. But in this moment, you have an opportunity to sink or swim. In this moment, you either step in your soul sign and ascend, or you step, you keep, you stay in the third dimension and you don't ascend. That's the only option. Step in and serve or stay back and go down the third dimension of where this planet's going to go for the people who choose that timeline. You can choose whatever timeline you want. And a big part of that is trusting and listening to your soul and tapping in the spirit so you can ascend to the new earth. So that's the final thing is that you are ready. You are prepared. You have everything you need. Get around people that believe what you believe, that want to go where you desire to go, and trust that you are here for a reason. And it's time to shine. And it's time to stop believing the news. Stop watching the news. Stop listening to the government. Do what you know in your heart. Feel into everything as a frequency. Stay off your phone as much as possible. Stay off the internet as much as possible. Get out in nature. Drink a lot of water. Drink apple cider vinegar. Stay up on top of your practices, your breath work, your movement. Keep your vibration high. If your vibration is high, you will not get this virus. Mark my words. If you go into fear and fear and stress, you'll get it. This virus is activated within everyone from fear and stress and EMF, which is electromagnetic frequencies, which is a computer, which is that in between your calls, turn on airplane mode. Do not have your phone on all day. Do not have your Wi-Fi on all day. Unplug your Wi-Fi at night. Unplug because I was told by spirit, the only way that the darkness can get to you is through technology. And if and when the power goes out for the three to 10 days, 
I would not watch the statement that comes through from the government. I wouldn't, I'm not going to. I feel like it's going to be transmitting a lot of fear and a lot of stress, and it's going to screw people's systems up. So you get to use discernment. And we're coming in a time-space reality where there will be different timelines happening at once, and you can choose what timeline you jump into. The timeline I'm, in, I'm into is I'm abundant, I'm thriving, so are my friends. Businesses is banging for everybody on my side of the fence because we've been doing this. And if you don't know how to create a business online, it might be time for you to start feeling into getting support with that because the life will not go back. It won't. It's going to be very, 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 very different. And from what I've been reading and believing, we're going to be in quarantine for a long time and there will be mandated vaccines and I'm not getting them. And I would strongly advise you don't get them either. And that's going to be a whole other can but I do believe that the light workers are shifting this timeline that the deep state and the Illuminati and the other people who want to control the planet were planning. And I think all of us light workers are kiboshing it because we are raising this frequency massively. So staying in your prayers and staying in your light and staying in your intentions, they can't fuck with the light. The light will always win. So do not be scared. Do not think that their timeline is going to happen because it ain't. We're already fucking it up. <laughs> <laughs> wow the f-bombs in today's episode you might want to put a caveat on that one. <laughs> oh, no problem this is a very open episode I, wow wow i'm so blown away i just have a few more questions and then we can wrap up i just really thank you so much for your just amazing like spirit wow it's just thanks so, for feeling me so, yeah, pure. so pure thank you uh, my next question for you is, what does happiness from within mean to you? Mm. <laughs> happiness from within means living your best damn life. It means choosing from what lights you up. It means no longer doing anything out of obligation. It means really choosing your sovereignty. What brings me joy? What is in the highest and best for me and all sentient beings in every moment and choosing from that space instead of a space of obligation and expectation and that was a way I lived my life so much for so long and so really choosing that I am my own joy joy dealer no one else so I get to get curious about what has me unhappy and I get to lean into that and so the more shadow work I do the happier I get the more I love all parts of myself and accept them and that's really the key to happiness is full 100% radical self-love, self-acceptance. And when we do that within ourselves, we can do that within others. And then we really don't have anything to prove anymore. And then we really realize like, oh, this frequency sucks. I ain't going to stay on it. I'm going to jump on this frequency. Um, and so I think creating happiness takes practice. Absolutely. Wow. Wow. Uh, my next question is, is, how do you want to be remembered when you take your last breath? Uh, I want to be remembered pretty much what everyone tells me now, which is that Amber will fight for you. She will stand for you. She's a spark plug. You know, she's like love and light and also a loving like smack in the ass. Um, <laughs> you know, she's, she's somebody that demands excellence from everyone. Um, she will remind you who you are. She will put a mirror up to you. Um, she loves hard. You know, she, she's committed to her students, her clients, to her vision. She was a warrior for God um, and a humble servant of the light. And she took her very last breath. She was willing to lose it all um, and to be killed for, you know, her commitment to spirit, to God, to the light workers. And um, yeah, there's nothing that she wouldn't do. To, she would put everything um, behind her vision and her mission. Um, for the planet and she loved her crystals and she loved her angel cards and she loved hard and she was the loyalist light worker you ever seen. I think my friend Jenna Phillips said something to me. She sent me a meme once, which is like, like I'm the one friend out of all the friends that will like call anybody out. Like I'm like, this is fucked up. You know what I mean? And like, I'm like the loving interruption, but like, when people mess with my click, I all of a sudden turn into this gangsta. Like, I'm like, do not mess with my girls. You know what I mean? So 
I think they'll be known for, wow, Amber really, she has your back. Like if Amber loves you, there's nothing she wouldn't do for you. She would give her your shirt off her back. Um, she's loyal, ride or die. Joan's always like, you my ride or die. Cause like, I just look out for my sister so hard. And um, yeah, so I think that's, that's about it. <laughs> I love it, I love it. I would like to ask um, if we can, uh, if you can lead us in just like a little mini, um, just like a healing, like meditation, just for a few yeah, minutes. Yeah, sure, let's do it. Let's do it, let's do it, let's do it. All right, everyone, so take a deep breath in, feeling your feet beneath the earth. And just exhaling with some sound. <sighs> Taking two more deep breaths in, just recognizing if you're making up a story about releasing sound, release it now. <sighs> Take one more super deep inhale, expanding your lungs and your belly, and on the exhale, make the loudest sound yet. <sighs> Go ahead and just visualize your feet growing tree roots deep into the planet. See these beautiful golden rivers of light making their way down, 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 down to the crystalline core of the planet. Just seeing them anchoring in, rooting into Mother Earth. As you see those anchors of beautiful golden light, see them making their way back up through your feet, tops of your feet, calves, ankles, shins. See that golden light swirling around your knees, back of your knees, thighs, quads, inner thigh, outer high, making its way through your hips, your lower spine. Seeing that golden light swirl around in your lower dantian or your womb space, your life force energy just activating it like a bright candle. Seeing that beautiful golden light make its way up through your lower digestive tract, through all your organs. Seeing that golden light radiate out of your arms, out of your palms, like a blowtorch into the space. See this golden light swirling from the bottom of your feet all the way up, 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 twisting, twisting, twisting through your throat, your heart heart, your spine, your third eye, your crown, seeing that golden light just swirl up, up, up and out, like you're in a beautiful golden cocoon. And I want you to visualize whatever is the biggest story, fear, doubt, insecurity, pattern or behavior in your life right now that's holding you back. I want you just to visualize it sitting out in front of you. Maybe it's a color, maybe it's an object, maybe it's a freeze frame of a situation or it's a word or a person. Whatever that is in your space right now that it feels like a big boulder blocking the road ahead. Do you just visualize it right now? And from a space of deep, deep compassion, I want you to visualize that thing, that behavior, that pattern, that habit, that story, that person, that lie, I want you to see it shrink into the four or five-year-old version of you. And see the four or five-year-old little version of you just standing there with the innocence of a four and five-year-old. I want you just to recognize this four or five year old self because behind every fear, doubt, pattern, belief system is an unhealed wound of your four or five year old self. Has nothing to do with the person, has nothing to do with the story, what he did, she did. It has to do with your four or five year old self having a wound, being abandoned, hurt, or programmed to believe that that thing has power. It's the boogeyman. It's not real. What's underneath it is a four or five year old that just needs to know that they're loved, that they matter, that they're safe, that they're capable, that they're powerful. 
And at some point, your four and five year old programming, computer programming in their delicate little brain was fractured. It was compromised. It received a virus and it made up a story, insert the blank. So your four or five year old self has been running that loop and that experience, that person, that behavior has just been a physical manifestation of an unhealed wound. So I want you to visualize right now a beautiful light piercing through the heavens, through time and space, through the atmosphere, through the hemisphere, in through the earth, passing through the clouds, making its way down to the beautiful blue planet, finding its way through your city, through the clouds, through the roof of your house or your apartment, and coming into your crown in like a beautiful white golden shower of a waterfall. I want you to just see it activate every cell, every pore, every tissue in your body, purifying, activating dormant DNA, Christ consciousness, heart-based consciousness, and see that light just make its way down through every cell, every bone, every tissue, every organ, every hair follicle, all the way down your body into the earth. Seeing that golden light still radiating from the earth below, up through you, out the top, and merging in your heart chakra, golden and white light from heaven, from earth, you cultivated this frequency. You knew that this was time. I want you to visualize from your heart chakra, putting your hands out in front of you, projecting all of that light, all of that healing out your arms, out your fingertips, and blasting with so much love that little four or five-year-old version of you. Recoding, recreating the DNA, healing that wound and seeing that wound just completely fill up with white, luminous, golden light, cocooning this little four or five-year-old version of you with this white, this healing, and seeing that computer program in their heart, in their soul, in their DNA, in their brain, just seeing the computer programmer that is the light, that is the mother, the motherboard. See, just reprogramming that lie, that belief, that habit, that fear, that doubt, that experience, just reprogramming it. So as though it didn't happen. So the belief system is completely erased. Like you take your MacBook in and they completely do a rewrite, rewrite and re-erase. See all of that erased. That boulder that really is the four or five year old you without boulder turning into this beautiful, radiant child full of possibility, joy, courage, strength, abundance, worth, just completely activated like a pillar of light. And seeing the light coming from the heavens now into the top of the crown of that child all the way through their body, radiating all into the earth, seeing them as a pillar of light, a spiritual giant, perfectly imperfect, Nothing to fix, nothing to change, worthy child of God. When you're ready, see that four or five year old self just smile back at you, come over, give you a beautiful hug, and just turn around and take off like they're running to play because they're so excited now. They've got their superhero juice, they can do and be and create whatever it is they say they want. No time to waste. And see the joy, the conviction, the inspiration, the excitement of that child, knowing it is possible because they don't have that wound anymore. Think about who they'll be, what they'll create from feeling whole, complete, and worthy in the now. Knowing the timeline that you're choosing and they're choosing is pure, divine, infinite consciousness, creation, manifestation, worthiness, power, abundance. And finding yourself back into your room, back into your body. Breathing into that. Seeing that child disappear out into the infinite. And just notice how you feel now in this body, in this moment, and what you feel is possible for you now that you've rewritten that code. Find yourself a journal or 
your phone, if you can write in your notes what you saw, what you believe, what you said, and what was rewritten, and continuing to affirm and declare that it no longer is. The boulder is gone. Wow. And so it is. And so it is. is. Wow. Wow, that was so beautiful. I, wow, Amber, thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you so much for your sharing your beautiful gifts and your story. And um, I'm going to put the links below, but can you tell people where they can find you? Yeah, I am Amber Valdez on Instagram. I am Amber Valdez on Instagram. I am Amber Valdez on Instagram. I say it three times because they say people need to remember it. That's how people remember. And AmberValdez.com. 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 So I offer one-on-one deep dive soul assignment strategy sessions, which I'm offering for half off at this moment. So I guess if you guys hear this and you are like, oh, shoot, I still want to take advantage of that, I'll extend it to you to this audience. Um, I don't know if I'll do another round of Turn Your Crazy into Your Purpose. We'll see. However, I am creating a Lightworker Mastermind that will be pretty much the same context. I'm also doing a lot of collaborations with my community, my tribe, um, for you know, soul-based entrepreneur business stuff. I also have one-on-one coaching options, three to six months. Um, I keep a really small roster, but if you're really ready to completely change your life in three to six months, and up-level your spirituality, your connection to spirit, your intuitive gifts, and really ready to launch your, your offers to the world, I would take full advantage of that. Um, and also, once all the dust settles and we're able to actually go back out into the world, I've got retreats, um, activations, and we'll be you know getting my book out very, very soon. So staying in contact with me. Um, I'll also give you guys the text um, that you can text to stay in my text group. Um, which has been pretty cool. I've been sending out a lot of videos and conspiracy videos and a lot of voice notes and meditations. And the number to text me at is 310-340-7813. That's 310-340-7813. She'll obviously have that in the show notes as well. And you can get into my text group. Um, so I will be doing a course around ascension symptoms and navigating through the fifth dimension and the new earth. I would love to have you guys join and I have my favorite thing I have to offer is a Lightworker Academy, which is a, a safe space for lightworkers from all over the world to be seen, heard, celebrated. Each month we have master guest experts of shaman, medicine woman, mystics, astrologers that support you in up leveling um, with tools and ancient practices. Um, we offer the crystal education of the month, essential oil education of the month. We have a book club. And then I come in and also mentor everyone for one hour each month in the Lightworker Leadership Call. Um, and that is only for $22 a month. So I would strongly encourage you to be a part of that um, because you are just as successful as the people you surround yourself with. And Spirit wanted me to make that at a price that every light worker could be a part of and no one would be left behind or no one's going to call you crazy. And crazy is our new normal. So we talk about everything from the Ascension to the Illuminati to angels to spirit guides. Nothing is off topic. Um, and it's just really powerful to know you're not alone. So welcome home if you choose to join us in the Lightworker Academy. Um, and all that can be found on my website, amberbeldes.com. So I am so grateful. Thank you for everyone that took the time out of your busy life to join Arms and Hearts with me and Janet today. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Have a beautiful evening and I will be connecting with you soon. Thank you so much. Have a beautiful day, you guys. Bye for now. Thank you. Hello, beautiful souls. Thank you so much from my heart to yours for joining me on this beautiful episode of Happiness From Within. You can follow Amber Valdez on Instagram at I am Amber Valdez. Again, that's I am Amber Valdez. Again, I am Amber Valdez. And you can also reach her directly on her website at ambervaldez.com. Again, that's ambervaldez.com. And you can follow me on Instagram at happiness from within now. Again, that's happiness from within now. And wherever you are in the world, just really want to thank you for tuning in. And if you received any value from this episode, if you can hop on over to iTunes to leave a five-star review, I would greatly appreciate it. It helps to spread the message of happiness from within. And I really just want to say that I really just love and appreciate each and every single one of you guys 
this podcast does not happen without you guys. So again, thank you very much. And I will catch you guys next week on the next episode. Have a beautiful day, you guys. And don't forget to smile. Bye for now.